Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Planet Coaster. We are continuing off from last time here in our wonderful Pokemon Go theme park. This is the new flat rate area that we established near the end of the previous episode. I want to try and do some interesting things, though nothing that's never been done before for sure. What I'm going to be doing on this black kind of small plaza here is building a uh, playset. A uh, playground, you know, kind of a wooden structure with... I think one slide and a few under areas to uh, hide in and this is heavily influenced by what Silverat did in one of his parks here recently and I thought it was such a kind of a cool concept to go ahead and build that I went ahead and built my own uh, this is my own take but it is essentially the layout is pretty much the same that he used so it's going to be these two towers one of which is going to be connected with a staircase and then a monkey bar across to the other platform which will have a slide down so it kind of encourage you to use the monkey bars as an access point for the actual slide itself there'll also be a small teeter-totter and balancing beam now the cool thing about doing this is that uh, the, these very versatile kind of wooden blocks that you can use it again it's it's definitely the most useful small object that we have so far still and once we're able to color it i feel like it'll be even even more useful and, and used throughout i think everyone's park is that you can pretty much build whatever you want uh the scale of this structure is a little large obviously as uh, the pieces that we have are definitely larger than what you would normally have in, say, uh, real life. You wouldn't have, I think these look to be almost like 4 by 8s in terms of width and length, when in reality you should be using probably 2 by 4s uh, for something like this. So it definitely makes the scale a little off and a little bit bigger than normal. The underside is going to have these two little doors, uh, kind of arches, under it and then there's a little cubby uh sticking out from the side that they can go in as well it's just it's just a place that you can call a fort or something people can play inside and uh, have their own area the monkey bars themselves they're also going to be made out of these planks though in hindsight i probably should have just used like the ladder uh, scenery object because i think that's a little bit more to the scale of the peeps but I think it's it's overall going to turn out well. The teeter-totter here is relatively simple. It's just, you know, a couple planks of wood in a straight line using a chimney as our pivot point because it has that nice little ball on top and that pointed roof that I figured that it looked like it could actually use that area to pivot off of. Uh, we're going to also use some wooden planks over on the right side for a balance beam. Uh, balance beams are fairly common in like small children's uh, playgrounds. The only thing that's probably missing is a swing set. Not really enough room for one. Uh, I, it would be cool to have it, but uh, for now, I think that's something that we'll have to uh, forego. Now, the black concrete, what that's gonna end up lending us to here in a second is making a pretty cool kind of decoration piece. We've been working these Pokeballs throughout the park so far. And this black backdrop, it's going to be a pretty good uh, source to make some sort of uh, Ultra Ball. And the Ultra Ball is a black Pokeball with a uh, kind of goldish yellow uh, ornament on top. And then the bottom half is, of course, white like normal. But... Obviously, what I'm building here is it's the first test. We don't have many yellow scenery objects to use. And so I'm, I'm having to kind of figure out what's the best scale uh, for this case. Figuring that it might be better to use the fountain again to get us a good normal sized Pokeball. And then sync the yellow sign that we're using in the scenery tab all the way down as far as possible just so a little bit of, of it is sticking up and that allows us to kind of control it a little bit easier and it allows us to connect them in a much more smooth manner the problem with doing this is that there's so little of the object showing through when we zoom out the LOD kind of makes it pop in and out uh, fairly badly 
It's it's not terrible. I mean, like at this distance, it's not too bad. But like if we zoom out any more than a couple scrolls, it's it, the yellow bit just kind of fades away into nothing, which is a little bit of an annoyance. But overall, I'm pretty happy with having kind of a cool symbol taking up the floor space, and it definitely keeps the park area Pokemon themed when in reality we don't have uh, the assets in my opinion to make uh, a Pokemon theme like Jungle Gym. It's it's not gonna happen really unless I, uh, I I can't sculpt a Pikachu or anything out of it. We don't have anything small enough uh, for that so hey you work with what you have in Planet Coaster and currently this is what we have. Uh, hopefully the next half will, will add some pretty cool smaller objects. Connected to the kind of new plaza area and flat ride is a fenced in section. This is of course gonna be some more tall grass. Tall grass is everywhere in Pokemon, so I want that everywhere in my park. Not really, you know, something that you're gonna see in a real park, of course, but you know, we're, we're going for a Pokemon Go theme and I think people would be able to program the GPS to where these would actually be functional kind of poke spots to capture your Pokemon, put down lures, uh, what have you. We're also gonna have to throw in some ben benches in that area and some tables eventually. And also finish up the last, the two homes that are in Viridian City. So in the game, it's pretty much the Pokemart, Poke Center, uh, two homes, and the gym. Now that gym is technically the last and final gym of the game. So it's not really a a good starting gym you know to build and so what we're going to end up doing for a gym eventually here in the upcoming episodes is it's going to be a pokemon stadium a little bit more uh, based off the anime less so about the games is and i think a, a little bit more of a coliseum look might be pretty cool now you notice the the title of this episode is a little bit weird but it does make sense if you know pokemon in the sense that this house here, this is where the old man is that uh, will actually teach you in the game how to catch a Pokemon. You know, throw a Pokeball, catch it, and he'll sit to you uh, early on in your journey. He's also generally kind of fallen over. You need to give him some coffee. And so this is his house. And we are also going to eventually make a copy of it, change the roof color for the other half. Uh, just because it's... Viridian City and Pokemon in general, they repeat a lot of the same. They reuse sprites, and so to kind of keep up with that theme and make things, you know, similar, but also just slightly different, we're going to be making copies of the house. It also saves a lot of time uh, when you're doing these larger builds, uh, even though this is still a relatively simple design in compared to, say, uh, what other people may be doing here lately. Pretty simple white trim around the window, just something to make it uh, pop out a little bit more. Gonna add some wooden shutters. This is very reminiscent to say what we were doing at uh, Gary uh, Gary Oak's house in Pallet Town. You know, nothing crazy new here. It's all about kind of keeping all these buildings relatively similar and uh, recognizable from afar. And then at that point, you know, we're pretty much at a good spot, I think. We're also gonna be able to throw in a concession stand in these little buildings. I do like to make my buildings usable in some way, whether it's throwing a small concession stand in it or making it into a restaurant with an interior. I don't like making a building just for decoration. I find it to be kind of, um, I guess I, I, want to, I want to assume the simulation is working. Uh, in, my, in my mind, I'm just like, that is uh, how the game can be played for sure. I mean, some people can play with a sandbox element feel and, you know, just lay down a, a, a closed off structure as decoration. But for me, I really want kind of that, that element of people going up to a building and then leaving said building. I, I think that that level of immersion that it can add is uh, something to really shoot for in the long run. This path though, it does connect a little bit weird and there are some things that I do want to change to try and make it a little bit smoother to uh, access. But in the long run, you know, this is kind of the first pass. And I'm sure over time, by the time we are finished with Viridian City, some things will get touched up and changed upon. Copying and pasting, of course, super important. 
you know, really make sure you're aligning things to your grid. Uh, even say uh, this, this is actually aligned incorrectly right now. I didn't notice which side of the grid line this wall was on when I placed it. And so you'll notice that when I put down this kind of bay window, it's, it's actually separated from the wall and I have to add some additional pieces to it just to make it flush again. So you wanna keep an eye on maintaining a good kind of grid uh, presence with your structures because right now, um, you know, when, when you kind of rush through things, this is kind of the, the symptom of, of doing that is probably the best thing and the best tip I could give. You can see adding some new side windows on here just to make it pop out a little bit more and then also some new uh, overhangs over the cool kind of concession stand there. We're just doing drinks in this area. The drinks in the other house will be just a restroom as I don't think having food makes sense near kind of a, a ride that you kind of spin on um, and then also you know, keeping those kids away uh, so they don't make a mess near the playground, I think would uh, be ideal. Gonna have to add some trash cans in this area eventually, but I'll save that for kind of the touching up episode. Same kind of wooden trim that's on Gary's house. Just something to break up the walls from the roof line. Nothing too crazy. And you can also, on your buildings, you can save foliage to the structure itself. Uh, the, the way you do this is the same as working with any other scenery object. Just make sure you have it in the kind of the XYZ placement mode and then you'll be able to say that onto the structure itself. If you don't do that, it'll just create it separately and you'll get removed from the build mode uh, that's already on by default. So you want to try and, uh, you know, if, if it's going to be a structure that you're going to be copying and pasting a lot, might be best to save the plants that are attached to that in some way. Uh, in the long run, it just might save you some some decent amount of time. Now the pathways, I just really like this whole area just because it's starting to become pretty quaint and it's actually starting to tie the park together, which I think is it's pretty much about time. The more areas you fill in, just the more finished your park looks. Overall, it just, kind of has a stacking effect in terms of quality. So from afar, it looks good. From up close, it looks good because there's just always something there to catch your eye. And once we cross the river into the new coaster and the Coliseum that we're gonna be building here next episode, I think that'll just be even, even better. Now the road going into the mountainside there, that's gonna be an aesthetic piece eventually. That's going to be where we Kind of in the road that's technically where you would be going up through vermilion forest and that checkpoint uh, past the old man's house but obviously we don't have the room to do something like that and since the elf was on its way anyways i don't really have the time to uh, invest adding that section into the park so we'll just put a decoration piece there and just block it off uh, and hopefully that'll su suffice you, know, you could say in the long run. This is the copied house, you know, changing the roof color to that wooden texture and then filling in some little details around it. So that's it for the speed build section. I'm gonna go ahead and toss it over to real time me and then we will pretty much go over in some things in a little bit of a slower pace so you guys can see how everything is coming together. All right, so welcome to the finished home residential area of Viridian City. You know, even though it's called a city, you can't really say that it is one. There's no high rises, there's no highway systems. There's there's two homes, a Pokemon Center, a Pokemart, and uh, hopefully a gym eventually. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they call it a city, but a hey, limited technology back in the day. What can you do about it, I suppose? This is the flat ride. I really wish and can't wait until we can color these flat rides as making this into kind of Pokeballs. At least the color of Pokeballs going around, I think will be pretty cool to have one of each type on there. If we can get that detailed, that'll be pretty awesome. We do have some benches around the small homes and of course we have some dead areas that I haven't gotten to just yet, but this is just a whole bunch of rock placement 
a whole bunch of uh, shrubs and stuff. Everything, the whole river line is going to start looking like this here soon, uh, which I think from a distance really looks nice. And then once we add water at Alpha 3, I feel like everything is just going to click and come together really uh, spectacularly for you all. So I hope you all are excited as I am for that. Here is our... So yeah, so we have our, our Pokeball, our Great Ball, and now our Ultra Ball over here. Now the pop-in, you know, it's just from the sign pieces that I was kind of forced to use to get this yellow. We don't have many yellow signs in the game right now. Nothing I can really do about that. And it's just the very top of these things showing. You can see how much of this sign is buried underground here. And I wanted to try and get it as flush as possible, just so it doesn't look dangerous to play on. It could be a padded thing that kids can play on, who knows. Uh, everyone attempts to climb this thing, by the way, but they always fall through for some reason. I don't know why. kind of wish they could actually climb up the staircase, but hey, everyone here, I guess, is uh, able to phase through walls. You can see also just how big... Uh, kind of the jungle gym area is it does take up a lot of room the really long monkey bar area uh, Using the tile tops just to uh, give some additional kind of uh, variation on it even on the sides of the slide here and There's some benches. We have that uh, teeter totter kind of seesaw here and Our balancing beam on this side a little bit of a green space for some picnic tables people can eat here if they don't want to eat in the Pokemon Center the jungle gym also has these ring elements on the outside so people can climb up this way if they want to uh, same on the kind of mirrored tower added a British flag just because we needed a I think a flag element it would have been pretty cool if we had a Pokemon flag but Hopefully, and I'm really hopeful for custom assets in the long run because really that's what we need uh, To really start pushing the limits of the game uh, here again because I think everyone's kind of Already at that kind of tier so I feel like more assets in general is just gonna allow everyone to create even more beautiful and wonderful structures in the future This is the old man's house. It doesn't really have a proper name in the game, he's just old man. Um, so, call him what do you want, but he's definitely an old dude. Here's uh, some more tall grass, another home. Uh, this one has some restrooms in it, just so people uh, are a little bit encouraged to go up and down the side paths, as I feel like this road will be busy once we get to the stadium and getting a roller coaster in this area all built up. All right. So that's going to basically cover everything we built this time. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I hope you all are excited for our next coaster and our final coaster. I'm planning on making some dueling coasters. So the next coaster build will end up being basically two coasters in one. I've never done that before. I don't know what I'm doing in that area. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get it done. But I hope uh, I'll be able to meet your guys' standard at this point. So look forward to that. And until then, go ahead, if you're new, watch my other videos if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button. Leave a like so I know uh, you guys like the progress so far. And until then, I'll see you guys in some more Planet Coaster.